I need to see my light. Alright. So, uh, this is all the little people. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> now no. I can understand you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to say is, uh, uh, Bree's line after this was done. What did you say again? That little bag is every shipper's dream. <laughs> I just really like that line. <laughs> so, speaking of which, we should talk about uh, well, what the story is. Uh, Magic Man uh, comes in, he drops this little bag of uh, little people inside, uh, or, uh, pretty much on Finn's uh, pantser, and he puts some sort of spell on, probably to make them look like them would be my guess. Um, you know, that's how they represent them and their friends and stuff. Uh, Finn finds them and he's already sort of having, like, these ideas of, oh, what'd it be like if Bimo and Night King got together or something like that, or if these people got together, and he sort of has these little versions of him and his friends, and he just starts messing with them a little bit, just sort of putting two together, seeing how they get along, the different two, and then they bring in the third person, seeing if they fight, and he just kind of becomes God among these people. And he can't understand them, he can't quite connect with them, he can just sort of influence what they do. And he becomes obsessed. Jake leaves for 16 weeks, because that's how long he needs to take to get over the fact that he's doing this. Yeah. And he comes back, and Finn's just obsessed, and he he's ruined everything by interfering too much, and so he finally tries to communicate, and he finds a way by grabbing him and shaking him and yelling at him, and he finally says, this is all my fault, I'm sorry, and he pretty much puts everything right at the end, and it just, you know, ends on pretty, uh, pretty much a happy ending. Um, I, I love ideas like this. I love the ones, like, I love the Twilight Zone where the astronaut finds the little people. I love that Futurama mm -hmm. where they form a civilization on Bender and he becomes God. I love these ideas of how much should or shouldn't the creator have influence on their creation, even it's, if it's not their creation or he just finds them. Is this just a reflection of you wanting to be God? No, I am God. Oh. And you should know that. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, Master. I think I've already done, like, three stories, like, where I'm God, I think, with, like, Nostalgia <laughs> Critic and the plot and stuff, but, um, but, no, I really like this idea, but it has been done a million times, so I'm thinking to myself, I hope they do something kind of different with them, and I think they kind of did, and I think one of the reasons this one is a little different from others is that I think with games like The Sims and a lot of these other, uh, things you can play online where you can become different personalities. I think this is kind of happening with a lot of people, and people either getting too much into their character or not realizing the person on the other end is a person, or not realizing the etiquette, all this stuff, and and just seeing the obsession that people get into it. I mean, I, we, we've heard stories about this, that people oh, yeah. just get too much into their character. Uh, and it, it, it's sort of an extension, though, because it's also... It's also a little him. It's not just he's playing a character. It's kind of little him. And I think, like I said, I think that just connects much more to what people do now with, like, uh, online RPGs yeah. or, 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 like I said, stuff like The Sims. I mean, I, I know there's other examples. I just I don't do them, so I don't know. Um, but, no, I, I really liked it because I've, like I said, I've seen this kind of stuff where people are just like, I'm done with my reality. I'm going to retreat to this reality where I can be this. And it so rarely fixes everything. It's like the problems still find a way to manifest and sometimes grow worse because now your, you know, actual reality has fallen apart and you find you actually just brought your troubles with you in the new reality. Except when you can't retreat back to the regular reality because it's like, oh, I've already destroyed this so I can stay here, but isn't this supposed to make me happy? And it's it's a whole lot of fun, <laughs> I, I guess, in terms of watching other... Oh. Well, no, no. Okay, okay, let me put it this way. In terms of, like, there's a documentary, and I'm told... I think it's called Second Life. Yes, that's have what you it's seen called. It? Yes, yeah, we okay. actually Have did. you seen it? Okay. 
Like the couple that leave, there's a, a husband and a wife that aren't together, that leave their respective husbands and wives to get together. And of course, by the end of the documentary, they're not together even. Yeah, and they're miserable and they're trying to blame everything else for it. And it's just, yeah, kind of, sorry, kind of a spoiler there, but you, let's, you knew going in, that's what's going to happen as soon as you see these two. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I, I love that. I love, I mean, that's, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on Netflix. It's uh, very, very good. Um, and, yeah, it's just a fascinating study of all that. And it's not always necessarily, it's all bad. It's that if you're thinking, this will fix everything, like my problems will go away with this, that's not going to happen. Yeah. The most you can do is you can figure out your problems. But you won't necessarily solve it. I, I've yet to see it, I'm not saying it, Maybe it can in some way, because, you know, whatever, there's always exceptions, but I've so... I've yet to see it fix a problem for a person. I, I've seen it identify, I've yet to see it, like, fix an emotional problem they've had. Well, the problem is this. In our society, and yes, I will actually get to the episode, <laughs> in our society, we're so ingrained with religion and the idea of a god that anytime we actually step into those potential shoes, we're always knocked down a peg. We're always put on that spot of, no, we'll never be able to handle it because we're doing something else that we should never be doing. Mm. Kind of like Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. Mm. Think about it. He, he created life. He did what, you know, only God was supposed to be able to do, but obviously not because he did. Mm. But in, in the end, eventually, he's not able to control his monster. He's not able to deal with it and all of that. That's where our society is right now. When our society's maybe a little bit more lax with it, we will see an episode of some show where someone does kind of become God, and they are able to handle it, and they are able to break from their own reality and deal with it. I know, numer I know numerous people that go online and kind of forget about their past existence, and then kind of come out of it fine. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I you mean, I, I, yeah, I want to emphasize, so, anyone that plays these games is like, that, they're fine, don't get me wrong, if you play them, you have fun, that, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm talking about you, the really extreme. Well, you know, of course, but I mean, there are people that escape reality all the time, into the video games, into Adventure Time, into whatever, and they come out of it perfectly fine. It's just when we, all we ever see in documentaries or hear about are those people that go, five steps beyond hmm. what the average person would do, or even the kooky person would do. These are the bizarre people. Hmm. I'm just saying, it can be done, it's just no one would find that entertaining. Yeah, well, and even I'll make a little bit of a play for that Second Life movie. I mean, most of them were the extremes, but so some of them were fine, and some of them were like, hey, the world has to adapt to this creation, mm -hmm. like the woman with, with the lawsuit and their the yeah. stuff being so... I mean, I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was so brilliant. The lawyer's like, well, you know, binary code is, you know, technically like literary text, so you're stealing this woman's creative, you know, yeah. identity. I mean, it's like, that is so clever. Um, boring stuff like that's boring though to most people. They want to see the crazies. They want to see the kookies. Well, they, but they got that in there too. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. the crazy is still the focus, but I think they have the sort of normal, I mean, as normal as can be, you know, side of it too. That hey, this is kind of fun too, and here's some neat things you can do with it, and it's kind of a fun little escape. Um, Plus, I also want to say this: most people who play God or God or whatever has had a long time to do this. Hmm. Finn was at it for a few days before he started to lose his mind hmm. and started experimenting a bit too much. And you gotta give him time to get into the swing of things, to become God. Well, even like... Even like a kid... I mean, because essentially what he is, he's a kid playing with toys. Well, yeah. And you got it's like, yeah, well, that's kind of what... We're all kind of playing God in a sense already. Yeah. But what I think is so clever about this one, uh, that's so different from all those other ones about God, you know, treating little people and stuff like that, is that it's a little version of him, too. It's a little version of his friends. That's I was what I think say. is really, like, that's the big thing that I think separates this from the other one. Because it makes like, it especially fascinating. Well, with, like, Bender and uh, stuff like that, or The Simpsons, where it has uh, the little civilization growing, or... <laughs> yeah, which uh, is based on the Twilight. Well, yeah, movie. and uh, the South Park episode with the sperm and the sea, sea monkeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. You're, you're right, and I completely agree. They're just another race, in a sense. This is little Finn, little Jake, little Rainicorn. They're all his friends. And for even the viewer to watch it, it's like... Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? You're, you're tossing, you know, Rainicorn and Finn together. That's really bizarre. They don't belong together. Jake and Rainicorn are happy together. What's wrong with you? And then you see, like, 
Shoes Goose, Lollipop Girl, and uh, Abraka Daniel, like, in a three-way. Mm -hmm. And Turtle Princess and, uh... <laughs> Space Zergiak. Yeah, yeah something gets really strange. <laughs> well, remember Zergiak. Um, remind me. I'm gonna have a name. Oh my god. He was the Goblin King that went around slapping all the goblins at butts. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he was upset. And now he was getting slapped yeah. by it. That's right. And, like, you had Marceline with Peppermint Butler and all this stuff. And it was like, you're seeing these things that should not go together. We've already been invested for so many episodes of this is the way they act, this is the way they are, that, oh wait, no, 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 that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be. So as a viewer, you're more invested than, these are people I've only known for maybe five minutes, and I don't really, it doesn't matter as much. Well, and, yeah, what I kind of like, too, is that it is still, like, even at the beginning, like, you kind of know where Finn's coming from, too, because you can just relate with, oh, just silly stuff. Like, yeah. you know, oh, let's just see what happens if I did this, you know? I don't think he really has the hots for Rain Accord in real life. I think it's more, at, at least, nothing hinted to that that I'm aware of. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's just like, oh, see what happens. Ha-ha, that's funny. Let's see what's happening over here. Ha-ha, that's funny. Yeah. You know, uh, Marceline with Peppermint Butler, that... That would never work, you know, but it's like, it's just fun to see. Yeah. You know, um, so, but then, like, when he really gets invested, he suddenly has this responsibility to it, or he feels he has this responsibility, and, like I said, it's a very interesting thing that is going on now that it's not only playing God, it's playing the person being controlled by God. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think having him also be in there and all his friends makes it so clever, because, again, with all these online games and the RPGs, that kind of stuff is going on. You're both God and you're the person God's controlling. Yeah. You know, and oh, that's yeah. a very interesting paradox going on right now, you know, and it's, it, I don't know, I I really, really like this episode. I'll say, actually, this is one of my all-time favorite episodes of the series, just how, like, Finn is like, oh, this is kind of fun. It's one of my favorite parts when, in the beginning, he's in the bed, and he pulls out the characters, and he hooks up Cupcake with Rainicorn. But before he does that, he pops out of the blanket and looks over at Jake. Like, he knows what he's Something doing is, is wrong, yeah. wrong. Or at least weird or yeah. unnatural. <laughs> and he goes back and he's like, okay. And he does it, and it's like... So he knows that something's a bit off, but at the same time, curiosity takes over. Yeah, it's just too tempting. Yeah, and honestly, if I had, like, a bag full of my friends and whatnot, <laughs> oh, God, I'd have fun with that. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, let's see what happens if this happened over here and that did... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Plus, at the same time... A less gassy Jason would yeah, be there, sorry. <laughs> Plus, at the same time, let's say you are playing God, you lose track of what, some of the characters. You're not going to be able to keep track of everything that's going on. Like, you had Marceline and Butler, Peppermint Butler. What was wrong with Peppermint Butler? He was half gone! Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Finn, had just, the death. Finn has just kind of lost track. You can't keep track of all of them. Un you know, he's not omnipresent. He doesn't see and know everything that's going on. And remember, he even already made the distinction of the C-listers mm -hmm. compared yeah. to the A-listers, and it's like, you know... He's not a god, and I think he finally realized that, especially when his own character was, like, on the edge, ready well, to die. Well, and I think it was clever, too, that they didn't talk like them. They all had the Charlie mm -hmm. Brown adults, the thing, the wah, 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 even in their own point of view, you know, where Finn's the cloud god or whatever, they're yep. still going, wah, 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 wah. I thought that was clever because that still creates a little bit of a separation. Like, it's not quite us. Yeah. And I think that makes it, because if they were talking like us the whole time, I think we'd all see Finn as just like the biggest, most evil person in the world or something for him doing all this stuff. But because there is that distinction of the language and it's, it's a, another filter of understanding them, uh, it makes it a little bit more understandable. Well, they're kind of like toys, right? Or are they? I mean, they seem to be happy at wherever they are, yeah. that they're in a bag. They're not like, hey, what's going on here? I'm concerned. They're just sort of going along with whatever. Yeah. So they're in their own kind of environment. Uh, I thought it was clever, too, that you sort of see what their environment is, too, that they see the world very yeah. differently. Um, you know, and how Finn in the clouds will come, you know, he has to keep shaking yeah. him, and then he disappears for a second, then comes back, sorry, my arm got tired, so you know, as he's talking, he's still doing this, and it's just... Yeah, make a gif out of that. Yeah, <laughs> so. Give the ladies what they want. Yeah, hey, I made that too easy, sorry. <laughs> I love what they did with what Finn did. First off, with him and Flame Princess, put them together, and then popped PB in between, and then he was just like, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, gets Debbie on board. And... and then Flame Princess gets all pissed off and they get into a fight. <laughs> PB comes out with a rain accord like, like a hose. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. And then a little bit later on, you find out that PB's fine. But she's going, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the weight training PB was hilarious. It was, uh, it was good. I, I, lo I love this episode. Yeah, I, I think this is one of my favorites. I think this one's really... A, a, it's a standalone, and it, it's a great commentary, but it's not... It's not too serious. Like, the ones that have been, like, you know, made really good points have been really, you know heavy on their message aren't always like super you know they're usually pretty serious and they're yeah. done very well but this one is still light-hearted and clever but not like man i just feel like my heart's been torn out watching that you yeah. know it, it's still funny and it's a clever idea so it's again it's nice to have something that can just juggle it and try something new so uh yeah, yeah i really enjoyed it a yeah. lot That's, this is one of my i was excited to see this one because every time i see it i just love watching it yeah no it's uh it's a good one so, I know everyone in the comments has been talking about this next one. Is it good? Uh, no, it's, I don't know many people talking about this one, actually. I saw people talking about like, you know, Jake's dad, Jake's dad! Like, everybody was going, Jake's dad, Jake's dad! Like that. Jake's dad! I don't know what comments you're reading. Alright, well, wah wah. Wah 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 wah